Hi everyone! In today's video, I wanted to share with you successes and failures with succulents in this year. With every year that I have collected succulents, and that would be about seven years, I feel like I have learned something new in how to better care for them. So if you're a beginner, don't get discouraged. Even if you kill a lot of plants in the first year or two, you're gonna get better. You're gonna get better understanding uh, your plants and their needs. So um, what did I do different this year? I decided to take almost all of my plants that have been under lights for a few years and have them outside during the spring, summer and fall season. Why did I decide to do that? Well, I had a lot of echeverias under the lights and I noticed that they have been shrinking. And I know that you, some of you have complained and said that you have the same problem. Uh, so they had beautiful colors, but they shrinked in size and they simply have not been growing. So I had some of the echeverias, like my echeveria raindrops for about two, three years under lights and it, the, the rosette was shrinking, not producing any pups. And I wanted to know what's gonna happen if I take it outside and also behead it. And maybe keeping it under lights, in a, keeping it small may be a good solution for you if you have a limited space. But I really enjoy uh, seeing growth, seeing propagation. So I, I thought that they, they're gonna benefit from this change. I also decided for the first time in many years to take all of my chrysulas out, including the small, uh, rare ones like spiralis and uh, barkley and so on. I did leave two trays under lights, but all of my cacti, aloes, agaves, sedums, echeverias, graptopetalums, graptovarius, and chrysulas are outside. So let's start with sedums. I also did something different with them this year. I decided not to place them under lights during the winter time because they would lose leaves or they struggled. So I also noticed that some of them didn't do so well in the conservatory when I would take them during the winter time. So this year I placed them in the coolest room in our house, which is a guest room, and I placed them by the window facing east, and I didn't water them any, very often, maybe every two weeks, and they did amazing. Uh, my worst tail did not stretch continue to have a compact look, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. Uh, my uh, One of my sedums did stretch a little bit and I had to do propagation and chopping to fix the look. And um, I think I made a video a few months ago about it. So now you're gonna practically get an update on how it is doing. So let's take a look. So here are my sedums. I left them here on the porch facing south. So they get very strong sunlight in the afternoon. Uh, by 1 p.m. they still don't have any strong sun. Um, this one I chopped quite a bit if you watch my previous videos uh, because it stretched. The spacing between the leaves was very different. I will try to find the video and leave it in the description. And look how beautiful they look. They have actually a lot of um, triple branching on the, on the tips. And I also tucked in uh, the cuttings and they rooted. Overall, I'm very pleased with it. It did got attacked by mealybugs, you can see guys. I haven't treated it much and I think it's really time to treat it so that I don't ruin this beautiful look. So I'm gonna have to spray it with alcohol. Uh, this one here, I think was struggling a bit with the, with the heat. Uh, as far as I know, I think sedums are resting during the hot summer days so they were not too happy this one was not too happy but it survived there is some really cute new growth coming up this one bloomed looked really cute uh, i am actually thinking to move it to a terracotta pot and this is the one that i talked to you about guys that was um, on a natural light during the winter time and did really really well look how beautiful it looks and this branch i discovered yesterday that it was tucked in behind and it's the only branch that didn't get light and look at the stretching so i haven't decided what i'm going to do i might chop it right here where the stretching started and propagate the tip but um overall it looks beautiful i did accidentally drop something on it so i uh, actually lost some of the leaves but look they're already growing new branches where I cut some leaves. 
So if you watched over the years my previous videos, this cactus, it's some kind of peanut cactus variety, had these five branches for the last three years. They looked like they were attacked by pests and that something was eating them. There were actual some, some holes that I have seen and they just didn't look great. But every year this one would bloom more than once. And because it has such a stunning looking blooms, I did not get rid of it. So for the first time this end of uh, winter, this year before the summer came, I started treating it with neem oil, organic neem oil mixture. And I uh, kept persisting with treatments for like week after week, for probably four times. And this cactus for the first time started growing branches. I think I defeated whatever this plant was struggling with. It's just so incredible to me how patient succulents are. They um, can, you know, wait for you to take care of them, whether it's watering or fighting the pests. They don't give up on life very easily. And they, it's just so rewarding seeing them uh, progress and get better. And so I'm super happy about that one. And a similar kind to that one is this one. I obviously had a lot of trouble with the peanut varieties. This one I have killed numerous times. I probably three times purchased it in US and they would die after the by the by the middle winter it would get the rusty color and just just die and then in Serbia I have done this as well probably three times well this year I did the same thing I like I did with this one I persisted and kept treating with neem oil I think it was mites that caused those rusty spots and guess what guys this one pulled it through it started having new growth and i am so proud of myself that i saved this one this is first time that i'm going to keep this particular variety for a year and let's hope it's going to be many more years so definitely use guys neem oil it can make a huge difference now let me show you one of my repeated failures this is my or what's left off from um, Stapelia or Bea Varigata. I had a beautiful pot last year. These plants I found so difficult to keep healthy here in Michigan. In Serbia it's a little bit better but they keep getting uh, mealybugs on top, keep getting root mealybugs and I will probably throw away this branch. I, I just saved it to show you I have lost this one numerous times. The only really uh, Stopelia variety that has been with me for years is this Huernia schneideriana that doesn't grow super much but it's somehow living <laughs> and blooms um, but it's constant treatments with neem oil or with alcohol. It's just so prone to mealybugs that I don't know. I kept them in terracotta pots, I kept them in plastic pots, didn't make really much of a difference it always gets sick, always gets attacked. So very, very frustrating. Now I'm going to the deck to show you some of the success and failures there. Kylo was just on the deck because it's sunny and warm and he got hot and this is what he does usually when he's hot. He just collapses and cools himself off on the, on the floor. And then he hits the door all over again and yeah wants to go outside. By the way, this is our new chairs and the dining table. We, since we got married, we had those chairs that didn't have um, any, any soft cushion and they were a little bit beat up. So we were happy to replace them. I actually picked up fabric and reupholstered uh, chairs that we purchased from somebody that were pretty new, but the color and the design didn't kind of fit with our house. So. So yeah, we're happy to have a softer chairs. I still kind of love our table that we had. It's really hard for me to part from it. But this table is also very nice. Um, it has actually some 
shelves underneath which is kind of cool where I can maybe put some baskets all right well let's go outside so it's a little bit more shaded I waited till the evening because it was such a bright sunlight when I was starting to record um, so I wanted to show you one of my biggest failures of this year and that's my chrysoulas I um, decided to take almost all of them from under lights outside and they didn't really like the transition uh, and it just they kept drying up so you can see this is my baby surprise um, that I have for years and I'm so sad I fortunately I didn't destroy it all but I damn it, I will have to do some chopping uh, baby's necklace Jade's necklace everybody has lost leaves uh, this one got really really stressed but it didn't I didn't doesn't look so bad um these are okay unfortunately my Prisula brevifolia look at that stress color lost a lot of leaves when I propagated it it was already starting to get hot and it didn't succeed to root and it just kept, kept having burnt leaves you see this black here and dark red it's all burn and I think they finally root some still haven't rooted you know some did so I think I can still save parts from here I still have this plant but it's not as big as it used to be it looked so wonderful so Hmm. It was a little bit too much sunlight, I suppose, too much heat or not good enough transition. Um, I don't know. This one is not looking bad. My other chrysoulas are pretty good. Um, Jade looks wonderful, so full, completely recovered. It's the small ones, and I haven't even shown you those like uh, rare ones, like the Barkley and some other ones they are almost completely dried up spiralis I had to throw them away so uh, fortunately my deceptors I left inside so they're lo looking pretty good um, what I did with Echeverius and uh, Graptivarius and Graptopetalums they were all outside and they did really good this year most of them I moved to terracotta pots uh, because they're not covered so whatever rain we get they have to put up with that and I know that people will tell you well rain is great, great for plants so you can just let them sit in rain for days and they won't rot that's not my experience even with the best soil mixture even with terracotta pots if you have 100% humidity like we get it and you have rain for days they will get affected so I did have a few losses for example this Echeveria chroma got the stem rot um, if you remember when I was doing propagation video this is the a piece that I propagated and I'm glad I did because the rest of the plant um, was lost uh, I didn't notice that it had a stem rot so it was spreading toward the top and I saved this and I saved these little ones so it's not complete loss um, and then yeah my Compton carousel so last time when I was propagating plants I noticed it was very flimsy losing leaves and I realized it's a stem rot I already lost one rosette this one here looks the best I'm trying to root it this one got some uh, burn and I think it's struggling to survive so we will see what will happen with that and I also lost Haggai to Lemonensis Echeveria for I don't know which time I think it's like fifth time fourth time and I don't think I'm gonna be getting it again my ghost plant is looking really beautiful um, a lot of plants are doing really really well I think that they enjoyed this year more than the others and look at the size of this Pearl Wunderberg I think when I originally got the great-grandmother of this Echeveria 
it was I think two years ago and I did the video with a beautiful photo uh, I might find it to post that link and it's almost the size of that Echeveria so I think this one keeps falling out because it's heavy from the biggest terracotta pot that I have for them so I think I'm gonna have to chop it but it's gonna be so exciting to get pups and look at them because it's such a beautiful color palette that Pearl and Norbert has so don't be afraid to chop I know that some of you ask why I chop perfectly healthy plants because guys some of them get so big I have to figure out where to store them during the winter time so you have to divide you know like for example this one had another big rosette on the side I, I removed it so you, you have to kind of regulate and look at these beautiful raindrops so it was six of them so you can see since I removed two how they got bigger and got more drops so they go, grow sometimes better when you divide them in this spot I had this one this one and another cluster and look how this one is now almost the size of the bigger pot and look how big this one got in such a short time in a few weeks because it got more space so I almost forgot I really wanted to show you some of the propagations that I totally didn't expect will make it um, the, the ones in the tray rooted really fast and I sold almost all of them but uh, I'm talking about the leftover stem that were really really aged and I didn't feel like they will have any energy to produce anything so I'm gonna show you quickly those and then I would like to quickly propagate Pearl von Nunberg. So this is the leftover stem of Reptivaria Debbie and I cannot believe how many rosettes, rosettes has started growing. Um, I didn't think it's gonna give me that much. They were originally looking like this and this is that very aged raindrops stem. I totally was thinking it's not going to produce anything and I was preparing to throw it away and actually they're getting a little bit bigger you can see how interesting it is how they grow when you propagate them they usually swirl around the stem the rosettes it's so beautiful and then I beheaded a Echeveria rainbow and it's actually growing to rosettes. How cool! And this is that shrinked Echeveria raindrops that I had under lights. I actually can't pull it out because it has so many roots. I already checked a few weeks ago and it's rooted. Very exciting. So I have prepared another pot already for it and you can see how big it is. It's, I was really concerned it's gonna get damaged with these beautiful leaves if it falls out of the pot. So um, I'm gonna be using thread and uh, yeah, leave some leaves here. Just trying to see which way I'm gonna go. Kelly's here to help me. Wow, this is pretty thick. It's not. Well, it's not working with the thread. So hopefully, I won't butcher it. I'm going to start cutting here. All right, actually this went much better than expected. I don't think I have damaged much leaves, but I will have to remove at least one here. I'm gonna place it on top in this prepared pot there. And this one here, let's see how it's doing. Remove one leaf, two leaves, and um, 
yeah so we're gonna straighten up this leftover stem with leaves and we're gonna see what it's gonna give us soon so yeah and then well look at this euphorbia guys i bought it a few months ago it was kind of expensive but look at now how many branches looking really great so yeah i think that's it for this year's failures and successes i i have sold a lot of my propagated plants pretty quickly um if you want to still buy some plants from me, I opened Facebook group with the same name as my channel. And you can um, join the group and see what I have for sale. Uh, I will also have some of my black pots for sale. The ones that really fit well in the trays. So if you're interested in those, I'll probably have a good deal on those. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, uh, here's this new addition, Apuntioides Euphorbia. Look at these plumes. They're so cute. Looks like a Christmas decoration. And here is my propagation of uh, Magnificia that I just chopped off a few days ago. I just chopped off these cuttings a few days ago as well. So they're rooting. We just started getting lower temperatures. When I say lower temperatures, I mean during the morning hours we get 50s and 60s which is really nice uh, they're waking up for solas from their dormancy and during the day we still have beautiful nice warm weather like 80 degrees so yeah i'll keep you updated have a wonderful week guys see you next time